Welcome, grace and peace to you. We are so glad that you have joined us for this Ash Wednesday service. As you prepare yourself for worship, please take time to gather your ashes. In order for the ashes to stay on your forehead, you'll need to make sure you've added some olive oil and mixed it in with your finger. There will be a time in the service for you to self-impose your ashes. The link to this worship service can be found in the chat or in our YouTube description. So check that out there. The reflection today will be offered by Reverend Allison Mark, Senior Pastor of Faith United Methodist Church in Torrance, California. Reverend Mark serves on the Board of Directors for the General Board of Church and Society. She is an ordained elder in the California Pacific Annual Conference. Thank you, Reverend Mark, for the message that you will share with us today. Our General Secretary, Reverend Dr. Susan Henry Crow, will be leading us in the imposition of ashes. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all of our sins. God's mercy endures forever. For opening prayer. O oh God of a thousand names and faces, Mother, Father of all life on earth, you who live in the cells of all life on earth, Lady of peace, of love, of wisdom, Lord of all stars and planets, best counselor, inward guest, giver of gifts and light of our hearts, Fill the innermost depths of our hearts. Wash what is soiled. Heal what is wounded. Bend what is rigid. Warm what is frigid. Restore us to our humanness. And teach us to know and love you. Amen. Amen. Will you join me in the song, Spirit of the Living God? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the Fall afresh on us, melt us, mold us, fill us, use us, Spirit Our first reading comes from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 and 12 through 17. Let's read. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, 
with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord, your God. Blow the tri trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And our epistle for this service uh, comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses, verse 20 through chapter 6, verse 10. So we are ambassadors who represent Christ. God is negotiating with you through us. We beg you as Christ's representatives, be reconciled to God. God caused the one who didn't know sin to be sin for our sake, so that through him we could become the righteousness of God. Since we work together with him, we are also begging you not to receive the grace of God in vain. God says, I listened to you at the right time, and I helped you on the day of salvation. Look, now is the right time. Look, now is the day of salvation. We don't give anyone any reason to be offended about anything so that our ministry won't be criticized. Instead, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in every way. We did this with our great abundance through problems, disasters, and stressful situations. We went through beatings, imprisonments, and riots. We experienced hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger. We displayed purity, knowledge, patience, and generosity. We served with the Holy Spirit, genuine love, telling the truth, and God's power. We carried the weapons of righteousness in our right hand and our left. We were treated with honor and dishonor and with verbal abuse and good evaluation. We were seen as both fake and real, as unknown and well-known, as dying. And look, we are alive. We were seen as punished but not killed, as going through pain but always happy, as poor but making many rich, and as having nothing but owning everything. Receive what the Spirit is saying. We now invite you to reflect on a musical offering entitled Our Distance, composed by A.J. Cow, with vocals by Melissa Polino.
prejudice is loudest when empathy is precise. When people learn to spread their love and this pandemic All right, I guess I'll introduce myself. Hi, friends, welcome. I'm Quinn Wonderling. Our gospel lesson today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 16 through 21. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth, moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Receive what the Spirit is saying, amen. Greetings, brothers, sisters, siblings in Christ. In gratitude, I come, sharing a brief reflection with our church and society family and faith on this Ash Wednesday, 2022. Now, I used to joke that Lent was my third shot at New Year's resolutions. Of course, there was the OG original New Year's Day opportunities to start my year fresh and clean. But when my list of resolutions began to falter by the end of week one, I figured my second opportunity for new starts would be Lunar New Year. After all, I am half Chinese, and the Christian Paschal calendar does follow the moon, right? But then, when all else failed, I decided to make my what will I fast from, what will I alms give, and how would I pray Lenten disciplines list? Now, surely I could commit to six weeks of a discipline, right? Or surely I could go without praying to God and refrain from fast food and chai lattes with oat milk and people magazines and give what I didn't spend on those frivolous items in addition to my offering. I could do that for a brief little season, I think. But then as I began to pastor and to lead yearly Lenten studies for the congregations that I served, year after year, I found that without committing to new ways of putting Christ at the forefront of my life and making the changes necessary to refocus my heart on God, then giving up something for Lent and then starting it back up again once Jesus rose again, really was an empty commitment to God without asking God to help me connect to actually restoring, not just restarting or stopping something, but I hope would hopefully reveal the season that we are preparing for. The season that we're preparing for is the resurrection. And in that preparation of cleansing and refraining from negativity, of refreshing our spiritual lives with God and others, if we really are willing to redirect ourselves, then we are witnesses who shall be stirred into our calling to serve God 
and to serve God's people, to love God and to love God's people. Yet, as we enter into this third year of living in a global pandemic, we have watched as multiple pandemics emerged. From the physical ailments and the realities of mortality to anti-othering sentiments and divisiveness. From violence and brutality to the struggle for morality and justice waiting to prevail. From mental health struggles to social isolation, both mandated and those self-imposed. From the realities of climate change to the natural disasters seen around the world. Yet help and volunteers and banned international travel have kept us from each other even further. From inequality across gender, race, age, sexual preferences, to forgetting how to be kind or compassionate to one another, our families, to our neighbors, to the stranger and from fear to fearing being forgotten. Ashes to ash and dust to dust. But today I see hope in the ashes. In as much as there has been much pain and disconnect, many have found new ways to create new connections and how to be God's people, how to be the church, and to see coming from the pain and suffering in the ashes that we recognize that we are part of God's humanity and we are called to come forth and be restored again from those ashes. So my friends, what does the start of Ash Wednesday really mean to you, to all of us? What is it that we are looking for this Lent? Now, as part of the United Methodist Church and serving on our General Board of Church and Society Board, I myself ponder, what does this mean for us as United Methodists? How is God inviting me into a personal encounter, one that challenges me to be a vessel for the common good, and then one to stir in others their own call? and to help them find their connection with God. If the season of Lent is supposed to be a season of introspection and reconciliation and deep reflections, as we focus and refocus on our hearts on God, what does it mean for us to restore our humanity so that we can be the instruments that carry out what God can do through us? When I was a junior in high school, I first remember my home church starting to impose ashes on Ash Wednesday. Now, I didn't remember doing it before, and I believe we didn't start doing it until 1992. But I would never have admitted it out loud. But at that time, I was always slightly embarrassed by that big black smudge on my forehead and I would try to accidentally brush it off. My pastor dad was pretty heavy-handed on the ashes. Yet, what I noticed was that I was in awe of how many of my Catholic friends wore their ashed cross as a badge of who they were. It was an outward representation of both their sinfulness before God and human mortality. Yet with the realization that both have been triumphed through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now I grew to appreciate that giant thumb cross on my forehead. But today, in a time like these, where fingers are gloved or sanitized, faces are masked and or shielded, or ashes or are on the go through church parking lot drive throughs or perhaps now sprinkled on foreheads like the earlier centuries. And now, even self-imposed. But just the same, we were reminded that the imposition of ashes is just that. It's a reminder. This is a reminder of an ancient symbol that in Genesis we read that God formed human beings out of the dust of the earth. 
in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And after expulsion from the Garden of Eden, the first human beings are told by God, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. That's chapter 3. The Hebrew word translated dust is occasionally translated ashes elsewhere. And throughout scripture, ashes are part of rituals when people seek forgiveness and mourn their sins. Just like in Numbers and in Hebrews and Jonah and Matthew and Luke, among others. So if Easter is resurrection and a new life in Christ, then today, on this first day of Lent, May we come before God, recognizing our human mortality, restoring our humanity, repenting of our sin, and remembering who we are and who we can be. Lent is a reminder of the journey to get there. Amen. Amen. Hear the invitation to the imposition of these ashes. While physically distanced from one another, we are connected through the grace and the redeeming love of God. Separated but joined, apart yet bound to one another, living in the here and the hope of the not yet. Together in the spirit, I invite you now to lift up your ashes as we offer up our hearts to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May the ashes that we hold keep us grounded and aware that we are indeed born of your beautiful and broken creation. We give thanks for the ministry of Christ who brought freedom and justice for all and for those who have come before us seeking the same. Bless these 40 days of Lent. Grant us strength and courage through these days. Hold us together in our shared vulnerability. Help us to care for one another and bear one another's pain. Let us hear the cries of creation. In love, bring us to know Jesus and one another. Grant us courage and wisdom by the grace of your abiding spirit. Amen. In response, we invite you now to impose ashes by dipping your thumb in your ashes and make a cross on your forehead and say, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return or repent and believe the gospel. After having a chance to place ashes on your foreheads, we will display on the screen some of the questions from Reverend Mark's reflection. We invite you to spend a moment praying with these questions.
Will you join me? Will you join me in this confession? Oh God, on this Ash Wednesday, we confess. We have neglected to do good when it was in our power to do so. We, like believers of old, have pulled down your altars and erected idols crafted in our own image. We have turned our backs on the poor, choosing instead to criminalize poverty. We have ignored the cries of the motherless, the fatherless, the widow, and the widower, the refugee, and the migrant. We have bankrupted our world with our greed and consumed more than our share of the world's riches. 
We have grown numb to the inequities wrought by racism, colonialism, and the COVID-19 pandemic. We have given generously to war chests while forgetting those who suffer when peace does not prevail. We have not dealt honorably with our enemies or our friends, and we have feigned a place in the company of the righteous. Forgive us and draw us closer to you by your grace to seek your justice and freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. But yet, beloved, hear this good news. The Lord, our God, is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God hears the earnest cries of the repentant, forgives our sins, and restores us by the Holy Spirit to the newness of life. This is our good news. Amen. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy, mercy, forgive us Hear now the Lord's Prayer offered as an English translation of the Aramaic in which it was first spoke. O thou from whom the breath of life comes, who fills all realms of sound, light, and vibration, may your light be experienced in my utmost holiness. Your heavenly domain approaches. Let your will come true in the universe, just as on earth. Give us wisdom for our daily needs. Detach the fetters of faults that bind us like we let go of the guilt of others. Let us not be lost in superficial things, but let us be freed from that what keeps us off from our true purpose. 
From you comes the all-working will, the lively strength to act, the song that beautifies all and renews itself from age to age. Sealed in trust, faith, and truth. Amen. May this Ash Wednesday be an invitation to recenter our lives on God. May we be restored in the hope and humility of our common humanity through Jesus Christ. May this season of Lent help us to remember through the power of the Holy Spirit who we are and who we are called to be seekers of justice and of peace. May it be so. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship as we mark the beginning of this Lenten journey together. <laughs>